What's up everybody, this is Barry Fishank and um, <clears throat> today I'm bringing you a video on my new vivarium which is, um, you know, I showed you in the last video I made, um, you know, my smooth newts um, and they have actually gone to restaurant right now as you can see in this um, clip right here um, you know, they, they look really awesome um, it's, it fascinates me how they can just change color and shape within like six hours is really amazing and you know newts are generally really hardy because they can pretty much regenerate everything apart from their brain so it's it's pretty crazy um, but I tried to make um, a natural Danish um, terrarium for them um, do know that this is my first time making a terrarium, so it might not be as good as a lot of people would um, would want it to. But um, you know, I got some decent lighting on here. I got some fluorescent lighting on here, um, which can give um, enough lighting for the plants to grow. Um, all of these plants are collected from um, forests that are um, you know very clean. Um, but the fo like the forests in Denmark um, are pretty um, pretty dark um, actually because uh, there's a lot of trees that get really tall and have these really huge um, sort of tree crowns and what this does is that the um, the bottom of the forest is going to be all dark so all of the plants that are um, at this size are usually meant to be in lower lighting and if they get higher lighting they'll actually just start to rot um, and that is especially with moss um, I do have a lot of moss in here and if moss gets um, too much lighting and this is Danish moss again so um, then it will probably die out now I do know that there are some other species of moss from uh, other places in the world that do need uh, higher lighting but in general moss do like low lighting um, as at least when they're terrestrial um, and uh, the reason I call this a vivarium is actually because uh, I split this up into both a terrestrial and an aquatic um, environment and um, you can see down here we got um, we got what what looks like um, you know a small uh, hole in the water uh, or well hole in the dirt um, around the forest um, which uh, you know, which uh, like generally smooth nudes do like just having um, very small areas of water to be in every now and again. They do not like they do not stay in the water all the time, especially when they're terrestrial. Um, but they do swim in the water sometimes. It's um, you know they do need water. They do need water to survive. So. Um, and they usually live in a very moist um, environment, so it has to be sort of um, um, like a bug area. Um, but as you can see here, the plants that I got in here, um, not all of them are from forests. Most of them are, but these are all Danish plants. Um, you can see here, I believe this is a male fern. Um, very beautiful plant. Uh, shouldn't be too hard to keep. Ferns are generally pretty hardy. Um, you know, I got some very few, um, some very few small ones over here. Um, you know, it, it just creates um, a little plateau for the newts to kind of go up um, and forage. Um, then we got a little bit of Leptinella uh, cutola, I believe it's called Leptinella cutola. Um, it's basically in Danish. It's actually called stepping fern because it 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 tolerates. Um, basically people walking on it because you know they usually stay like flat around the ground like this and you can just step on them as much as you want and they won't break so it's it's pretty cool um, I actually think I can see a salamander or oh, well a newt let me see here He's, they are pretty hard to see when they just sit in the dirt because they do pretty much have the same colors as the dirt um, the dirt in here is, um, is something I got from my garden which has not been um, um, you know, which has not been uh, like um, complete, it, like it's completely free of pesticides and any sort of poison, um, so it's pretty safe. Um, and I live pretty close to a forest, so um, where there's a lake, so around this area, they're, they're, it's generally pretty clean because it's illegal to 
um, you know, um, go around and put a lot of stuff in the in the substrate or well the dirt around the area because that might actually um, completely um, pollute the water in the um, in the lake, which we do not want. Um, and it's actually already pretty polluted because um, apparently I do think it's I do think it's a problem with um, high phosphates around this area because it, like the algae's in there are like. It's almost like really thick cyanobacteria, like freshwater cyanobacteria. It's it's really gross. Um, but anyway, um, you know it's disappearing uh, after a little while, so it's it's okay. And um, what I tried to do though is that it's not. I didn't catch these smooth newts um, at this forest and at this lake because this lake around here is basically way too big. And yes, newts do live in few some few lakes, um, but. Generally, they do not survive very well where there are larger animals like, um, you know, larger fish and stuff like that. But if you if you go like um, if you go out to some some huge forest, you might find some small water holes um, here and there, and they will actually begin to to breed in those areas um, around around March and May, um, and you'll find them all throughout summer. Um, Right now, at this time of year, August, September, that is where they actually begin to get terrestrial, which is also why you saw mine getting terrestrial. They got terrestrial yesterday. Both of them got, uh, like, um, the oldest one got um, terrestrial for two days ago, and the other one just got terrestrial yesterday. So I just set this up um, um, for them. And, um, you know, they're doing pretty nice, you know, I've, I, you do not normally see them that much, uh, um, you know, at day, but they are nocturnal animals, so they will usually come out at night to hunt and feed and things like that. And one thing which is really good about this um, terrarium is that, um, you know, all of these plants are taken out of the wild, which means a lot of small critters are going to go with it, um, especially this moss you see right here, you know, I got this entire area called with moss. Anyway, we got the Lipsinella Coptula over here, or Cotula, whatever it's called. Um, and then you can see down here, we got some more moss covering up the area. And basically, this entire front is covered with moss. Um, and moss is really good at keeping the moisture. So, whenever the, um, the newts wants to get a little bit of moisture um, without going into the water, they can just step on the moss and, you know, it will give them a little bit of moist. Um, Generally, um, you know, when I looked at this moss, there were tons and tons of small critters. Um, actually, um, there were these small critters that reminds uh, that reminds me a little bit of um, amphipods or copepods from from saltwater reef tanks. Um, just in you know, uh, like terrestrial amphipods. It looks really awesome, um, and they just crawl around the moss. Uh, you know, they do eat it. Um, so uh, you know, newts actually do eat pretty much anything. Um, that is um, that that basically fits into their mouth. So, um, um, this plant right here, which you see here in the middle, um, I do not know what this is called in English. I do know what it's called in Danish, but it's basically um, a plant that usually grows uh, around gardens, um, sometimes around bushes. Um, it generally grows really, really fast. Um, it might flower, um, you know. Um, sometimes but like I do not expect it to do that so um, and you know then I got a little bit of grass here in the background and the grass is I didn't actually just take some grass out but like when I when I took some of these big leafy plants that you see right here which are really awesome I thought it was a bush at first but it's not it's like it's like um, yeah I do not know what it is I just found it like in the middle of a huge field um, it's it's really weird but it, it, I think it looks awesome so I put it in here and they seem to like it and um, you know they also keep the moisture pretty well and um, because the, the uh, water kind of um, drips off of the leaves um, so that they can drink some water and um, you know they usually don't drink water from um, you know, uh, small dirty water holes like this. I try to keep it moisture, like um, I try to spray it with some water that you see right here. Um, pretty much once or twice a day. Uh, I usually just once a day because, um, like you, you can. Oh, there's a salamander back there. You can see him. Oh well, Newt. There he is. Look at him. He's awesome. They really enjoy this. Um, I do not. I'm not able to identify if it's a female or a male yet. Like there are two. There are two, and I hope it's a male and a female. 
but they will get the um, the crested backs when they get older um, for breeding and stuff so um, you can also see this right here um, I do not expect these plants to live for very long um, I just saw them and I, and I thought they were really cool what I did notice is that they have these small um, small bristles on top of them like very soft bristle, bristles it doesn't sting or anything um, but they have these small bristles and as you can see it traps water bubbles on them so that they kind of keep the moisture um, which is important for me because I want to keep the, the moisture in here it's very important um, you know they live in a very moisture environment um, but you know um, so you can see here I got like four uh, I think I have three or four of them. Um, like it's basically like a leaf, uh, a st like a leaf stem of like some really awesome flower that I found that was like purple. It was really cool. Um, however, what I would say is that um, like most of these plants, I do not expect to survive for very long. Um, and you know, I can just go and collect some more if I want to. It's not really a problem because this. Believe it or not, this terrarium has been completely free to set up because I got the newts, um, I cut the newts myself, you know, I, I have the uh, the moss, uh, I just walked like 100 meters away from my house and I found some moss and some plants, um, even this piece of driftwood, uh, well it's not really driftwood, it's just some wood um, that I also found, it's very thin, I do know that, um, but it seems like the, um, the newts actually enjoy that, um, so that's pretty cool. Um, and it's pretty free of any weird um, fungus, uh, which was something I was really looking out for because I do not want a lot of fungus in this tank. It can actually spread out pretty quickly. However, um, when this is a Danish terrarium, um, it's very important to, to notice that I need to have pretty cold temperatures because yes, sometimes it gets very hot over here. You know, it gets like, um, like what, like maybe, I think the highest the highest temperature that has ever been around here is like 33 degrees celsius or something like that so um you know i do live in the northern part of denmark so i do not well what was that there's something moving what is this is it this the, the newt oh maybe it's just some bubbles falling off i don't know well not bubbles but water water drops um but yeah so like um this tank is, uh, well this terrarium is really nice, um, I do notice that I also do have, um, this was something I was um, stressing out very much because you know you do need to have some sort of place like a hole in your terrarium where air can come through so that fresh air can come down into your terrarium, you can see here they cannot come out either, um, so it has um, the lighting and it has the um, you know what do you call this I do not know what you have to call this but it's okay um, so I do have this open um, most of the day sometimes I have it closed like right now for example I just sprayed it with some water to get a little bit of um, moisture in there and I actually closed it down just to keep the moisture in there for like a couple of minutes um, but yeah so like um, this tank looks really nice and um, I can't wait to to see when it grows out um, and I can't wait to see the um, uh, like the why do I always call them salamanders? Um, the newts um, to grow up. Um, it'll be really awesome. You know, they get to be, to be about like 10 to 12 centimeters, so it's pretty cool. And uh, there's also this little awesome beetle, as you can see up there. I'm not sure if you can see it on the leaf over there. Uh, let's see if I can focus on it. It's a really cool one. It tried to fly out, but I, I got to catch it before it, it did that, so it's pretty cool. Um, but yeah, so that's basically the um, terrarium. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and yeah, see you guys in another video.